Hi, Dr. Patrick Gentempo here, and thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel. We have great content in store for you. I'm so excited to be here with you, and let's jump right into it. Alex, thank you so much for letting me come and speak with you. My pleasure. So I'd like you to start out by telling me who you are, what you do, where you are, and what kind of work you're doing right now. Oh, um, I'm Chen Shen, Alex Liu. I'm a social professor in the School of Public Health at Harvard University. And my research interest is looking at how people exposed to pesticides and what would be the health effect as a result of the pesticide exposure. So specifically, exposure to pesticides, what's, what are the health effects? Yes. Okay. And but you, you've been looking at not just the health of humans, right? You've been looking at the health of bees. Right. Can you tell me something about that? Well, that was, uh, that was, a, that was the, the issue that started in 2007 when I learned from uh, a TV program about a mysterious uh, scenario that happened in uh, Florida in terms of massive amount of honeybee disappear in the winter time. So at the time, I treat that as another mysterious ecological problem that not necessarily related to pesticide. But once I start researching what related to bee and the health and so on, I, I realized that pesticide may have something to do with so-called colony collapse disorder. Um, but I waited another two, three years, hoping that other bee scientists will tell us exactly why bee disappear and cause a CCD, but never have satisfactory answers. So when I first came here at Harvard University, I had the opportunity to apply for the campus-wide faculty um, research grant, which is very small amount of num uh, money, but I have this very interesting and in a way the very fascinating hypothesis. So I was so determined to make it happen, to make this research happen. So it took me a year to, um, to, to organize everything, to put all the key players in place, and we did it. But I have to say that at the time, um, it's, the interest is not really just to uh, solving the honeybee colony collapse disorders. I, I also believe that pesticide that their interest have something to do with human health. But at the time, in terms of human health research for those pesticides called neonicotinoid, is essentially zero. There's no research. There's no research on, and say that again, neonicotinoids? Yes. And, and they've been used as pesticides for how many years? So neonicotinoid has not been on the radar screen until B colony collapse disorder. So that was 2006, 2007. But even before that, neonicotinoid as a group is the most commonly used insecticide in the world, including the United States. Now, is it an insecticide or is it a pesticide? It's an it's insecticide. A, so it is, it's, a, it's an insecticide. Right. So it's used to ward off insects eating crops as opposed to exactly. bees. Exactly, exactly. Interesting. And it, when, did it, when would it come into use? It actually started in the 1990s but not to the extent until 1998, 1999. So if you look at the pesticide uh, usage history, for example, there's always one dominant group of, of that being used in different areas. So we started from DDT, those organo crawling, and then we phased them out because of the Saturn Spring book, and then we use organophosphate for almost 30 years. By then, there's a bundle of research suggesting organophosphate linking to different type of health outcome. So government took action on organophosphate, and then we move on to pyrethroid, which is another group of uh, insecticides. So it's always kind of in tandems. There's one pesticide use and then phase out, and the other one come in, and so on and so forth. But for some reason, neonicotinoid always, always under the radar screen, but has been commonly used. So it was kind of like a misconnection. There's a disconnection here that we know that pesticides, those pesticides has been widely used, but there's no data. And so the question is how government can approve the usage of, of neonicotinoid without any health effect data. And how can they? Well, there is a report made by American Bird Conservancy. Um, actually, if you read, read the report, you get some sense of how and why government, especially federal government, approve 
those uh, pesticide use without data because they think that this is urgently need. Otherwise, farmer would be left without any pesticide usage. So it was approved through like an emergency exactly. status. Exactly. Yeah. And some of the EPA staff, the scientific staff, actually warned EPA that those pesticides actually could be very problematic. But US EPA decided to ignore their own internal recommendation and approve the use of neonicotinoid. And those are, um, are stated and, and documented in that uh, American Bird Conservancy Report, which is made public in April 2013. So do you think it's the neonicotinoids that are causing the, the colony collapse disorder? According to our bee research, yes. And the hypothesis that we have back in 2009 was something like, you know, when we talk about genetic modified corn, it's really just adding a bacteria called Bt. And the Bt somehow render the corn plant the resistant to the, the harm of the pesticide that farmers spray when they were still at a seedling stage. Okay, so Bt become a magical bacteria to protect corn plant, and that's part of this whole so-called Bt corn. But farmer has been planting Bt corn for almost 20 years. Guess what? Res resistance show up. So none of the Bt corn re retain their mojo. Uh, none. None. None of the Bt corn. Right. None of the GMO corn. In, in fact, a lot of professors and extension agent researchers actually warn USDA and EPA that you have to find a solution, otherwise those Bt corn will be useless because the rootworm problem is so severe and they don't get killed. And in part, I think they were somewhat indirectly promoting neonicotinoid use. So going back to the hypothesis that we have in 2009 was that during that time, the company that manufactured Bt corn, which is Monsanto, they need to find alternative. They need to find something else because these things is not going to work, especially in the United States. Bt corn might be still um, useful in other places that they don't really have a long history of planting Bt corn, but in the United States, they are useless. So they found this wonderful insecticide called neonicotinoid. The reason they can use neonicotinoid is because the unique characteristic of the insecticide, which is systemic. So no other pesticide, insecticide, has this systemic property in which that you don't need to spray those pesticides. You just coat the seed with those pesticides. When they were still the seed, and then you coat those pesticides onto the surface of the sea or even make them soak it um, in the concentrated water. And then by the time you plant the corn seed, the pesticide will grow with the plant to every part of the plant. So it gets incorporated in all the cells. Exactly. So the residue of the pesticide that used to be in the sea will be translocated to every part of the plant, including corn, including the pollen, including the, the leaf, and then agglutation come out on the leaf. And what about including the animal that eats the plant? That part we don't know. But what happened is that the corn that we harvest from those genetic modified crop are made for something else, right? Um, so one thing that really uh, put the corn in use is so-called high fructose corn syrup. So it's a liquid sugar water uh, it was predominantly used in beverage industry and other processed food. Um, somehow, commercial beekeepers start using high fructose corn syrup in late 1990s because they found that honey actually is a very valuable commodity. So they scrap off all the honey at the end of the season, right? But they had to put sugar back to the hive, otherwise the bee has no food during the winter. So they've been using high fructose corn syrup. But it, had, it was fine, although some beekeeper questioned about the nutrition content of high fructose corn syrup, but not to the extent that feeding beehive with high fructose corn syrup would kill the whole colony until Monsanto experimented this practice by coating their seed with neonicotinoid. That was 2005, 2006. And guess what? A year later, they wipe out 93, 95% of the colony in this country within the commercial beekeeper um, uh, industry.
so, so that was my hypothesis. My hypothesis can be supported by the fact that what's going on in the field. So we went out to get a bucket of clean high fructose corn syrup, which is no neonicotinoid. And then we put some neonicotinoid. In this case, we use immunoclobin, which is the most commonly used neonicotinoid in the world, not just in the United States. So those level of, of immunoclobin in high fructose corn syrup that we added to does not kill the bee right away, meaning the bee were still healthy during the time that we feed them those contaminated, pesticide contaminated high fructose corn syrup. But guess what? 23 weeks later, the high that we treated with immunoclobin, they just die one after another. They not only die one after another, the way that they die, the postmortem uh, observation that we have are consistent to the report of CCD. Thanks so much for being here and watching that video. And can I ask you to please subscribe to our channel so you can find out when we're posting new content. You'll be alerted right away when we do. To share this with people you think might benefit from the information. And certainly it helps us if you like the video. So if you like what you just saw, go ahead and hit that like button. And again, thank you so much for being here with me right now.